should this life And should this life Bring suffering Lord, I will Bless you in 
Get ready, get ready to move. Get ready for the spirit. 
Thank you, Father. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we come to you today in this place. So we move when the Holy Ghost is moving. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Any kind of addiction. Thank you, Lord. Just coming up, things are going to start to loosen up already in you. Hallelujah. Now, it don't, it, listen to me for just a moment. It don't take long for the Holy Ghost to set somebody free. Jesus didn't normally pray for 20, 30 minutes over somebody. Hallelujah. All it takes is one touch from heaven. That's all it takes. Hallelujah. It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen fast. It'll happen quick. And it'll all be done. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Go, Jesus' name. Go, Jesus' name. Go, Jesus' name. Go, 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 Jesus. Go, Jesus' name. Go, Jesus' name. Go, Jesus' name. Go, Jesus' name. Go, go, go. Go, Jesus' name. 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 Go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, why just thank you, man? Laugh. Let's go.
Thank you for Lord in the Rabbi Mushman, the Ramanaka Saka, the Rabbi Mushka, the Ramanaka. Hallelujah. 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 You need to understand, it's, it's you know what Teflon is, don't you? You know? Yeah. It's, a, it's a slippery surface, and uh, uh, in, in the spirit, I can see like these, these, these demons are trying to grab a hold of you, but it's like you've got Teflon and it just keeps slipping and slipping. It just keeps, I mean, they're trying, they're trying, don't worry, they're trying, but they just, they just can't get a grip on you. They're just slipping off, just slipping off. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I heard the Holy Spirit say a word to me this morning. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father Ibrahim Dona Meshita. How do you want to do that, Lord? Thank you, Father Ibrahim Dona Moshita. Saparuta. Thank you, Lord. I heard the, I heard the word expectations. <coughs> expectations. For we all expect something. Some expect good, and some expect bad. And some expect nothing, but they're still expecting. But if you open up your heart today and expect, ex have an expectation of the goodness of God, to overshadow you and overtake you and provide for you. Have an expectation in me, saith the Lord, for you will not be disappointed. The world can disappoint you. You can disappoint yourself, but I'll not disappoint you, saith the Lord. So have an expectation, but have an expectation in me and in my word and in my promises. For my word cannot fail. It is yes and amen for you. So let your expectation be in me, saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Well, the Lord is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. 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 We're going to... Uh, have, did you have anything in? Okay. Hallelujah. We're having a, a water baptism here in, a, in a, just a little bit. but. Uh, I want to just go over a few things with uh, with us. It uh, wouldn't hurt all of us to hear all these things again and, uh, uh, about uh, baptism. But it says in Mark uh, chapter 1, we'll look at a few scriptures this morning. You don't mind doing that, do you? I think that's why they call it Word of Faith, because we want the Word in there for sure. Uh, Mark 1, 1 says, at the beginning of the good news, the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as is it written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Now, we, we call him John the Baptist, but that's not what they called him in those days. He was called John the Immerser. Okay? And so uh, it, there's a little bit of a difference. To be immersed in something, uh, you're not sprinkled with it. Okay? There's a difference. You can be sprinkled with something or you can be immersed in something. John did not sprinkle. Right? And so uh, in this day and age, uh, through uh, uh, how churches change, denominations change, uh, but God doesn't change. He's always the same. And so uh, we find that uh, when the people came to John, they, he would immerse them in water. And it was for them, for just uh, uh, for, their, for their sins, for them to come and to repent. Okay? And uh, there went out unto, unto him all of the land of Judah and they of Jerusalem, and they were all baptized of him uh, in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel hairs and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, the, There's coming one mightier than I after me, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. 
I indeed immerse you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it shall come to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open, the spirit uh, like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I, I am well pleased. And so we find even Jesus. Now Jesus had no need of, of, to repent. He had no sin. But yet uh, he said, I need to do this. It needs to be done. So Jesus is setting an example for everybody. Okay. Now see, you may be, a, I don't know about you, but as a small child, as a, as a baby, I was, I was baptized. My parents had me baptized. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't even remember it. Okay? I guess I was there. But uh, as, as an infant, they, they baptized me. We don't find anywhere in Scripture Jesus or the Bible, anybody in the Bible baptizing infants or small children. John was baptizing adults. Jesus will find out and doing the same thing. Okay? Now Jesus, he would, they would bring the small children to him. He would lay his hands on them and bless them. Okay? But until you know the difference, you know, over the years we, we've had you know, people, you know, we have water baptism, water, water baptism tank, and all the really little kids wanted, they want to get in and, and I want to be water baptized. Well, again, if you understand it and you're old enough to understand it, fine. But if you want to get in and play, Okay, and, and a lot of a lot of kids do. It's better to wait a little bit, okay? And so, again, we want to just follow follow the Lord and what He says to do and how to do it. Does water baptism save you? No. Uh, many people have, you know, without a heart change, have gone down and been water baptized. They go down a sinner and come up a sinner, just a wet sinner. So, what changes us is the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts. That's what the, the real issue is. So water baptism is an outward expression of an inward work that the Lord has done. It's a public expression that you have received Christ into your life. And so it's, it's, it's just telling the world, God's done something uh, for me and to me. And so it's just simply saying, you know, I belong to the Lord. The Lord is mine. And I'm going to follow him. If he says to do this, then that's what I'm going to do. You know, he told the disciples, Terry, ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Well, he wants all of his people to be endued with power from on high. Amen? Amen. He wants every church to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody said the other day, he said, you all do a lot of speaking in tongues. Well, that's what they did in the early church. Amen. Well, I don't know if that's for today. Well, it, it, it's for today because the Holy Ghost hasn't changed. Now, people change, and they change their opinions and change their doctrine and everything. But just go back to the Word of God. The Word of God is still the same. And so you really can't have a Holy Ghost church without the Holy Ghost. Just Amen. have to have it. That's just how it works. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, Miss Kim, uh, uh, do you remember that song, I Have a Plan? You were working on months ago, and you sang me a few, a little bit of it. And uh, I can tell by that blank stare that you're. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm so glad we didn't ask you to do that one this morning. It would be good to brush up on that one soon. <laughs> Colossians chapter two. Colossians chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. It says, We're buried with him in baptism, wherein you, you are raised with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. And so what it is, it's really it's types and shadows. It's, it says that we're, you know when Jesus died, he went into the grave, and when he when he died, and then he three days later he rose up again. Now we won't hold you down for three days. Okay, you don't have to worry about that. But it's just simply it's it's types and shadows of how Jesus died. He went into the grave, and then he rose again. And so it is with the child of God. It's a type. It's a, sh a type and shadow of just dying to the world and dying to the south, and then being raised up again. And so it's, it, whether you know it or not, it's, it can be a very supernatural experience for people. I remember 
uh, many years ago in my first church, we had this this older lady, and uh, you, you don't mind, yeah, kind of her story, don't you? Okay. And uh, she she uh, confessed to me. She said, you know, I've been a Christian for most of my life, but I've never been water baptized. I'm terrified of the thought of being immersed in water. She said, there's just something about me. I feel I have this tremendous fear. And I, and I just, I, you know, want, I've always wanted to follow the Lord in water baptism. I just wanted to. I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to go to heaven. But I just wanted to follow the Lord and do whatever he had said to do. And so uh, uh, she just, we'd had several water baptisms. And she said, I want to, I want to. And then she just, she wouldn't do it, couldn't do it. And one day we were getting ready to have another water baptism. And she said to me, she says, uh, I, want, I want to be water baptized. Day, Pastor. I want to be water baptized, but you have to promise me. I, I, I trust you. I trust you that you you won't hold me down, and that you will just get me down and get me right back up again, really, really quick. She says, "I trust. I trust you. I put my life in your hands, Pastor Riley. I am." And I assured her. I said, "You can you can count on me. I won't. You know, I'll, I'll just we'll just go down and come right back out. My hands will never leave you. I'll always be right there with you." And so she submitted to water baptism, and she was terrified of it. But she 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 surrendered to the Lord. She wanted to follow the Lord, and and because He said to do it. And so when she went down uh, in the water, when she came up, she'd never been filled with the Spirit. She came up speaking in tongues. She had a glorious experience. She had a supernatural encounter with the Most High God. She faced her giants. She faced her fears. And she found out that God was bigger. <coughs> bigger than anything. <coughs> bigger than anything that can ever come against us. God is bigger. Things come against us. I think we said it last week. God has his best soldiers uh, thrown into the biggest fights. Yes. You say, well, I don't know if I want to be a soldier. Too late, you got drafted. <laughs> you just got drafted. Yeah. Okay? And so... But I know many people are in some, some terrific battles, but uh, you know what? You're still going to win. Yeah. You, sometimes we think it's terrible. I'm in a battle. You're supposed to be in a battle. What do soldiers do? You know, they just, they, do they, you know, uh, what does Wayne do? You know, does he, uh, does he just sit over wherever he's at? We can't say where he's at. Does he just play checkers and things like that? He's always training for, for, the, for a battle, always yeah. training yeah. for war. Why? Because they're ready. And if it was to come, they would know exactly what to do. And so we, we can be in battles, but, you know, there, there's, there's joy knowing that, that God's got me in here, and I'm, I'm coming out. I remember we were sharing a little bit here, I won't go into the whole story, but uh, uh, Ed Dufresne, the, he was getting ready to go minister on a, on a particular morning, and the Lord said, no, I want you to stay here. I want, I'm going to send another minister down and, and have them minister for you in here because I want to talk to you. And so he was in his room uh, waiting and he heard the door open. He thought it was just maybe the, the maid or somebody coming in. And he said there was two big old angels, two big ones. He said, in fact, their, their heads went up through the ceiling. And they had on armor. And he said, and that armor had all kinds of dents and all kinds of things. It, it, you could tell they had been in some battles. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes we think, well, I'm just fighting all alone. No, you got angels fighting with you, too. Glory. You got angels fighting alongside of you. Oh, yes. What? What are they fighting alongside of me? To keep you, keep you up. Glory. They're not going to let you get defeated. No. Nope. I'll throw that in for free. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. It tells us the same thing again in Romans chapter. Six, if you want to turn over there, Romans chapter six. It says in verse four, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that life as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. So uh, even so sh shall we also walk in the newness of life. So again, it just tells us that we're buried with him and we rise again. We come up into the newness of life. Hallelujah. It says in John 3, why don't you turn there with this, go through this fairly quickly for you. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Verse... Uh, John chapter, what did I say, chapter 
23, verse 22. And after these things uh, came Jesus and his disciples into the land of uh, Judea, and he tarried with them and baptized. And John was also baptizing in uh, Anon near uh, Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. Hallelujah. So we find that, that here's an interesting thing. Jesus and his disciples were baptizing people, too, along with John. And so uh, in John 3, 26, there you're at verse... Uh, we're in verse uh, 22. Look at verse 26. Uh, and they came to John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptized, and all men come unto him. He's, uh, Jesus was starting to draw much bigger crowds. And John had multitudes, but Jesus started to draw bigger crowds. Okay. Now go with me to John 4, verses 1. And, and when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. So we find that Jesus was was busy. You know, they, his men were they were busy telling people to repent and to and to be baptized. In Acts chapter two, we find this. Acts chapter two Verse 38. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, is even as many as our Lord shall call. And finally, let's look in Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Philip has gone down to the city of Samaria, verse 5. He's preaching Christ down there, and there's many signs, wonders, and miracles. There was a gentleman there by the name of uh, uh, Simon that uh, he was a sorcerer, and uh, he's, he finds out that he doesn't have near the power that is flowing uh, that is flowing through Philip. And so he begins to hang on and, and begins to join the crowd. Uh, it says in verse 12, but when they believed Philip's preaching of the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus, they were baptized, both men and women. And so we find that uh, men and women were baptized there uh, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 26, then the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south uh, unto the way down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is in the desert. And so he arose and he met, met an Ethiopian. And so who was riding in a chariot, and so the, the angel said, go ask him what he's doing. So he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how, how can I understand? Because I don't know what it is. And so Philip joined the chariot and began to preach unto him. In verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began to preach the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. As they went their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What does hinder me? Uh, to be baptized. So Philip was telling them of, not only about Jesus, but, but that he could be water baptized also. And Philip said, this is very important, if you believe with all your heart, you may. That's why when I was water baptized as a, as a small baby, uh, I couldn't believe. I, I couldn't even remember it. So here's, here's the criteria, is, is, the, is you have to believe. He says, if you believe with all of your heart, uh, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he was baptized. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Hallelujah. Glory. So we try to you know, make these things as simple as possible so that uh, people can understand, you know, uh, the simplicity that, that is there. And so, here I have a cucumber. It's a small cucumber, but again, it, it is a cucumber. I went down to the big potato and, and I was looking for a cucumber. I wanted to make this so simple, even Bill could understand it. Uh, and so a cucumber is a cucumber, 
is a cucumber. It's just a matter of is time. Is a cucumber. <laughs> you can dice it. You can slice it. You can shred it. And and you know they're they're tasty. You put them in salads and little different things. But a cucumber is a cucumber <laughs> is a cucumber, and really that's just basically what it is. And so the cucumber is kind of like kind of like all of us. We're a cucumber. But then there's there's something that can happen to the cucumber that will change it, so that it's never. It, it, well, we'll do it this way. There we go. See, when the cucumber gets baptized in the in the brine, okay, that that cucumber, and once it's sealed, that cucumber can never go back. It'll never never go back. It can never, it can never, are you taking pictures, Miss Kim? This would make a good one for the All right, gosh, I mean, there might be a deduction in your paycheck. But see, the pickle can never go back. Once you ask Jesus into your heart, you, you really can never go back. He's not going to let go of you, even though you might go through some struggles. But see, that cucumber, it changes. It's changed from the inside out. Once that <coughs> cucumber... <coughs> Pastor Neil ripped that top off. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <coughs> Thank you. And so once, once the, the cucumber goes in here, and it's immersed. I had to take out some. Come on. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Did I have the top? And once it's sealed, I think it's, let me, let me look and see. Let me see. I think it's Colossians. Oh, it's Ephesians 1.13. If we put that up. Ephesians 1.13. And you, in whom you have trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and in whom also after you believed, you were sealed. You were sealed. You were sealed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You see, when you, when you get... When, when, when you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are, you are spiritually, you are immersed in him. You're immersed in his blood. You're immersed in him. And you're sealed. And, and uh, there, can you take that, hand me that jar? You didn't put the lid on tight. You didn't seal it. See? It's sealed. You can, you can shake it. You can rake it. You can, you know, move it. You can... Do whatever you want to do with it, but it's sealed. Nothing's going to happen to it because it, it's being changed. Because it's what on the inside is changing it. That that cucumber is going to change from the inside out. It's not going to taste the same. In fact, it's not going to look the same. It's going to be different, and it can never go back. I'm just telling you, you can never, you girls, ladies, you can never go back. I say it this way. I'm in too deep. I've gone too far. I'm totally pickled. Okay? pickled. I'm tickled that I'm pickled. I'll give that back to you. Thank you. I'm, I'm done, yes. I'm done with the pickles. Now, if anybody would like to have a jar of pickles to take home with you, you're welcome to, to have them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Changed. Changed. You see, where did you get that, that, that idea? Actually, it was a friend of mine, Pastor Mark uh, uh, Wentengel, was watching uh, Veggie Tales. <laughs> he got it from Veggie Tales, and I got it from him. But it's such a classic, it's, it's so simple. It's so simple when you see that. That would change. Thank you. God changes people. If you're if you're open, I was just uh, on Facebook a little bit this morning, and I saw uh, 
there was a, a person that I, I know, he goes to a, 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 another church, and uh, I think it's a, it's not a Nazarene church, but it's the other one. Uh, anyway, but they're out on the street praying for the sick, getting them healed. As he said, just amazing, just people just getting, you know, that's so awesome. People are just out on the street, they're just, they're just flagging people down that are hurting and sick, and, and uh, they're doing what the, the Word of God says to do. Jesus said in Mark 16, he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the good news. They that believe and are baptized shall be saved. And they that believe not, they will, they will be condemned. And so the, the good news is we can believe. Amen? Amen. And so in just a couple of minutes, we're going to go ahead and take up our Sunday morning offering. And, uh, uh, but then we'll dismiss. So Guy, where is the tank at? Is it out there or out, it's out here, out in the back? And so... We invite you to come and to, to watch these young ladies. They've given their hearts to the Lord, and it's been their desire to be water baptized and to serve the Lord. And so we're we're uh, anxious and, and just thrilled that we can be a small part of their life. You know, because you know, once they get done with their program, they're gonna they'll, they'll move to different places here in Canada or someplace. But uh, they're going to be sealed with the Spirit, and wherever they go, they can make a difference in somebody's life. It's like there's a wonderful hedge of protection around them, too, that God gives. Amen? Now, I know they, they didn't, uh, they said they, they brought a change of clothes, but they didn't bring any towels with them today. And so, um, uh, Deborah went and she got a, a, she just happened to be, she lives close by, she happened to have some big towels, so girls were, were in good shape, for, so you're going to be able to, to be able to dry off. So anyway, we're going to take up our, our Sunday morning offer. If you need an envelope for your giving, we've got people that can help you that just would love to be a blessing to you. If you need an envelope, put your hand up. Make it out a check. Make it out to Word of Faith Church. All right. Well, let's say something good. Yes. Let's say this. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, believe I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. That the Word of God is true. That what you sow is what you reap. And so I sow in faith. My tithes and offerings. And you said in Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever things that I would sow, I would have that harvest. So I'm sowing good seed and a wonderfully good ground, and I'm going to have an awesome harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go ahead. Hallelujah. And before we go outside, just one, one more little thing. We do have a Holy Ghost service today. But if you're here by some chance and you've never, ever asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, you've never asked him to come into your heart, and you hear us talking about how good the Lord is, singing how good he is, and, and you're wondering, could it possibly be true? He's good to his children. We're not all his children, but you can choose to come into the kingdom of God. It's a decision that you make. You ask him into your heart. It's very simple. It's not even joining this church. This still would be a good idea. But it's not joining this church that saves you. It's not joining any church. It's Jesus asking him into your heart. It says in, in John 1, 12, For as many as received him, to them may be power to become the sons of God. And so if you're here today, and you say, I've never asked Jesus into my heart. I don't think I'm right with God. If I was to die right now, I don't know if I'd really go to heaven. You can know. You can know beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's just simply a simple prayer prayer today. Is there anybody here today who, that you would like us to pray with you? Just lift your hand up if that's you. If you would like prayer today for that. You want to be certain that you're going to go to heaven. If you read the, if you look at the news and you'll see this world is changing fast. <coughs> Jesus is coming back very, very soon. And you want to be ready. You don't want to miss his coming. Amen? Is there anybody? Before we change the order of the service. All right. Well, God bless you. And the ladies, uh, we will meet you outside in about three or four minutes. All right. Okay.